There has recently been a trend among video game YouTubers of doing challenge runs of different Mario games, particularly what is called the Coinless Challenge, where you try to beat the game avoiding as many coins as you can. I've seen this kind of videos of games such as Super Mario 3D Land, Super Mario 64, Super Mario World, New Super Mario Bros, or Super Mario Galaxy to name a few, but I haven't found any coinless runs of my favorite game of all time, Yoshi's Island. I've been playing this game for 17 years now, and I have beat it so many times that I often challenge myself to complete the game in very difficult ways, such as not dying, not killing any enemies, getting no points, or beating the game as fast as possible. So I ask myself, why don't do a coinless run? Is it possible to beat Yoshi's Island without touching a single coin? Well, let's find out! First, we have to set some rules. We have to start a new game, play through all the levels from World 1 to World 6, and beat Baby Bowser trying to collect as few coins as possible. We can see how many coins we have collected in the coin counter that is shown on the post screen. This coin counter increases if Yoshi directly touches a coin, which can be a floating coin, a coin from an egg, a coin from an enemy, a coin from a balloon, etc. But Yoshi can also indirectly collect a coin by throwing an egg, letting a baseball boy throw an egg, or spitting a watermelon seed. Lastly, any enemies that are present on screen while we go through a gold ring or defeat a boss will automatically be converted into a coin that will be added to the coin counter. Similarly, if we go through a gold ring while carrying a flashing egg, it will hatch into a red coin. And if we do so while carrying a big egg, it will hatch into four coins. So now that everything's explained, I think we are ready to start the challenge. Once we enter the intro level, we stumble upon our first problem, which is this set of coins. We can avoid those with the help of a shy guy, which can give us an extended flutter if we jump off him. However, after that we encounter this set of coins, which sadly are completely unavoidable. So that's it? Are we already collecting coins on the intro level? Well, no, because if you just press start and select on the controller, you can actually skip the intro level and go directly to world 1. Phew! 1-1 one one is a really easy level. Just play through it avoiding all coins, and keep in mind to kill all the enemies near the gold ring, and you'll be fine. In 1-2, however, we'll have to do our very first big skip, because you see, as soon as we enter the second screen, there are coins blocking every path that we can't possibly avoid. We'll have to execute what is known in speedrunning as the 1-2 skip. If we jump off this shy guy and then jump off the pole on the very first frame, that is we have a 60th of a second to make that jump, we'll conserve the boost that the shy guy gave us and be able to go over the top of the level, completely skipping the second screen. 1-3, just as 1-1, one one, has some coins that we can avoid with no problem. Unfortunately, we can't say the same about 1-4. In the beginning of the level, we find these nasty coins. With a precise jump, we can somehow squeeze between the first ones, but I'm afraid there's no way of getting over the last one, so that'll be our first unavoidable coin. Fortunately for us, the next levels are really easy to do coinless. Just remember to eat the 1-up balloon at the end of 1-6, otherwise it turns into a coin. These coins blocking the path in 1-7 may seem like a problem, but again we can just use a shy guy for the extended flutter we need. In 1-8 we are supposed to collect these 3 red coins so we can get to the pot where the key is. But we can avoid them by luring this bandit over here and using him as a trampoline to reach the platform. Sadly, just before the key door, there's this horrible group of coins. We can jump over the first three, but those two last red coins are completely unavoidable. Also, Salvo the Slime always spits one coin when we deliver the last shot that kills him, so that's another one to the coin counter. And with that, we finish World 1 with 4 coins in our pocket, which is not that bad. The first level of World 2 is ok until we reach this area. Nope, that's not good at all. Fortunately, we have a solution for this. Just before, we had to go down this pipe to proceed through the level. 
but if instead of just pressing down, we press down and jump on the same frame, we are telling the game that Yoshi should go down the pipe, but Yoshi is actually not in the loading zone of the pipe. This confuses the game so much that it just sends Yoshi straight to coordinates 0, 0 which happens to be the top left corner of level 1-1. This is known as a 1-1 warp and is heavily used in speedrunning. From here, we only need to beat 1-1 and it will count as if we had beaten level 2-1. In 2-2, again, we can use a shy guy to avoid these coins at the beginning. But we are faced with a problem once we arrive to these stairs, as there are coins blocking the path. To overcome those, we have to get hit and eat the toady that will come for Mario. Then, we can use him here to go over the level and skip that whole part. The rest of the level doesn't feature any dangerous coins, so we can move on to 2-3. Here, we encounter these two red coins, which seem unavoidable, but once more, we can use a shy guy to go over the top of the level and skip them. However, we won't be so lucky with these coins. We can get to this spot pretty safely, but this coin? Oh my god, this coin! I probably spent like a whole hour just trying to avoid this disgusting coin. But in the end, I made it, so we know it's possible. Speaking of disgusting coins, we see these ones at the beginning of 2-4. Yeah, unfortunately, unlike before, these coins are impossible to avoid. And I really, really tried, but we have to collect at least one to be able to continue. After that, if you just run to the door, you will always collect that red coin. But we can actually skip it if we duck under it and then damage boost with the help of this ghost. In the next room, you're supposed to hit this cloud, go up these stairs, go through this top path, hit this switch, get this key, go through this down path, open this door, go down this pipe, go through this middle path and hit this switch only to find out that the path is blocked by these four coins. What are you looking at? Luckily, we can avoid them using a technique known as the perfect flutter. You see, with a normal flutter, Yoshi is not supposed to reach the top of the platform. But if we repress the jump button on the peak of the first jump, Yoshi will flutter a bit higher, just enough to be able to make it. The rest of the level is alright until the fight with Big Boo. See all those bats flying around? Yep, you guessed it, they turn into coins once we defeat the boss. But we don't even need to get to the boss, because we can use this guy and clip through the pipe to do another 1-1 one -one warp. And from here you know the drill, flutter, flutter, yada yada yada, and finish the level. 2-5 is next, and it's really easy. As always, remember to kill all the enemies near the gold ring and you'll be good to go. 2-6 features these coins, supposedly blocking the path, and I say supposedly because you can just go over the top once again. Unfortunately, we run into another unavoidable coin in 2-7. There's absolutely no way of getting to this platform without collecting that first coin. In theory, maybe you could do a series of perfect flutters and get to the last platform, but you'd need to be some kind of god at Yoshi's Island. The last part is actually really tricky, we want to skip the card transformation and jump from this edge. After some flutters, we have to land exactly between these coins. Then, after you let those tap taps pass by, you can continue with no problem. We run into yet another unavoidable coin at the beginning of 2.8. After some tricky platforming, we arrive to this point. No matter what I did, I always had to collect some coins. And after many tries, I came to the conclusion that you have to touch at least one. The rest of the level features some tricky jumps, like these ones, but that's nothing compared to this part. To avoid those coins up there, you have to first destroy these spikes, then ride the arrow really carefully and land in this exact spot. After that, you wanna clear these other spikes and use one of the shy guys to get up there. This last jump is kind of difficult, but you'll get it in the end. Lastly, remember to let the fire extinguish before you kill the boss, otherwise, as you know, it turns into coins. And with just 7 coins, we head onto wall 3. 3-1 three has no problems at all, except for those damn monkeys. And 3-2 is almost okay. Almost, 
because of these stairs. As Sif would say, holy fuzzy these stairs. Remember that incredibly precise jump we had to do back in 2-3? Well, this is similar, but we don't have to do it once, nor twice, but three times. Bear in mind that you have to land exactly between the coins. So yeah, this part is really, really, really difficult. Our next stop is 3-3, and normally we are supposed to ride the helicopter through this small gap which is infested by coins. Although they seem impossible to avoid, we can dodge them using a trick called Tongue Glitch. Here's a clip of Carl Sagan42 doing it. We have to eat that monkey and then use a pow from our inventory, which we can win from some bonus challenges. If we spit the monkey at the same time the pow is triggered, Yoshi's mouth will be in a glitch state. Basically, the game thinks that Yoshi is carrying something in his mouth, when there's actually nothing. Then, we have to get hit by that shy guy and take the helicopter as soon as we can, otherwise the game could crash. If done correctly, you'll see that the level looks kind of messed up and you can go to the right and hit this save ring, which is really important because then we can kill ourselves and will respawn much further into the level, avoiding all those pesky coins. But don't be so happy about that, because now there's a whole series of unavoidable coins awaiting for us. First, there's this stupid red coin at the end of 3-3, then we're forced to collect these 4 coins in 3-4, and last, at least 3 drops from the frog's stomach are converted into coins once we kill it, and there's nothing we can do about it. In case you are wondering, we can't even use a pow to convert those drops into stars, because items are actually forbidden during boss fights. 3-5 is next, and the only challenging part is jumping off this flying shy guy so we can surpass these coins. Both 3-6 and 3-7 are really easy to do coinless, but for some strange reason I kept collecting 6 coins at the end of 3-7, although I made sure that they weren't any enemies near the gold ring. I think the reason behind this is that, although we can't see them, there are actually 6 fish just under the gold ring. To kill them, we have to activate a power block just before we finish the level, and indeed, that way we won't collect those fishy coins. 3-8 is also really easy, so we can just kill the naval piranha and oh my, we head on to world 4. In 4-1 we may have some trouble getting past this part, but we can use this ice melon to freeze the enemies and go along the bottom. In the last part of the level, we can use these Koopas to dodge most of the coins, but the last three are sadly unavoidable. 4-2 turned out to be quite a challenging level. At the beginning, we need to use the Koopa shells to jump over all those coins. Then, make sure to eat that last Koopa, because we'll need him for later. After that, if you casually walk down these stairs, you will always collect those two red coins. But Yoshi's hitbox is really weird, and if you duck before the first red coin and then walk, you won't collect it. And for the other red coin you can just jump over it. We can't bounce on the arrow, because we could collect those coins above it. But we can use the shell in our mouth to get to the top, and then, with the help of Alakitu, flutter over the coins. Lastly, we can avoid this group of coins by, once again, going over the top of a level. And after that, the rest of World 4 is not that bad. There are these bounces in 4-3, this beginning section in 4-4, which is a bit tricky, and we have to bounce off a couple of Koopa shells in 4-6 and 4-7, but overall, it's pretty easy. To avoid touching these coins in 4-8, we can come up with a quite creative solution. First, we need to make a small gap in there in which we can stand. Then, we have to use a watermelon from our item list, which again we can get from a bonus challenge. Spitting the seeds of the watermelon will destroy all the spikes, which I suppose it makes sense? So that way we can continue with no issues. Now we just defeat Hookville the Koopa and World 5 here we go. First level is 5-1, and that blizzard won't bother us, because we can just borrow Lakitu's clouds and dodge any problematic coin with these. Now, when we play through World 5, we will learn mainly two things. One, that penguins are Yoshi's best friend. 
they can help us to get under these coins in 5-1, we can jump off them at the beginning of 5-2 to avoid these coins, we can use a penguin to kill this other penguin at the end of the same level, and we can spit and bounce off this last penguin in 5-3. The second thing that we will learn is that skiing sucks. A lot. <laughs> The skin section in 5-3 is just plain horrible. There are unavoidable coins everywhere, and I spent hours trying to find a route that would allow me to collect as few as possible. In the end, this is the best I could come up with. After dodging those coins at the beginning, we have to make the tiniest jumps to only collect 2 coins in the first rock and 3 in the second. Then, we have to jump at this exact time so we only touch 3 coins of this other rock. Then, we must collect the first coin of this slide to get the necessary momentum for that jump. We'll collect those two coins, land on this seagull and make a tiny jump to go under the last coin. Then, we touch those two, collect that one to gain momentum again and barely miss that line of three. And that's only the first screen. The second screen is much nicer, but we still need to collect that coin to gain momentum for this huge jump and then this coin to be able to land on these seagulls and avoid the rest of the coins of the slide. And finally, we enter the worst part. These 9 coins are unavoidable. We simply can't jump high enough to dodge them. After that, we must get hit with that bomb, so we only collect one coin when we land. As soon as the snowball is gone, we jump again and collect those 3. And just in the end, because the game hates us, we are forced to collect 4 coins in that rock and 8 coins from that line. In total, we have to collect 41 coins, only on the skin section. To give you some perspective, that means that 2 thirds of all the unavoidable coins in the whole game come only from the last part of 5-3. So yeah, I think we can conclude that skiing sucks. But the show must go on, and you'll see that the rest of the game will be a piece of cake compared to that last level. In 5-4, the part where we have to ride this lucky monster features tons of unavoidable coins. But there's a convenient 1-1 warp that we can use to skip them. We have to destroy those spikes to open a gap, and then, with the help of that shy guy, flutter under the level and enter that pipe from the other side. Again, as you're not supposed to do that, the game freaks out and just sends you to the first level. In 5-5, if we hit this switch, some nasty coins will appear. So we actually wanna do this part switchless. Which is perfectly possible, and the only difficult part is getting hit here and using this toady to get to the top. Quite similar to what we did back in 2-2. In 5-6, we have to be careful and kill all the baseball boys we can see in the first part, because, as you know, the eggs that they throw can collect coins. And in the last section, we wanna ride these balloons to dodge any coin we might encounter and fly away to victory. 5-7 is really easy, as well as 5-8, except maybe for these coins, but as you can see, you can squeeze in there with no problem. Give Raphael the raven what he deserves, and we are already in the last world. We'll take advantage of the scary skeletons in this part of 6-1. Eat this small bird, and wait for that one to fly towards you. To avoid these coins you see here, we are gonna use them both. Bounce off the one you had in your mouth at the right time so you can eat the other one. Jump from this cave to this platform, and then jump again to kill that evil piranha. Then jump for the last time to speed that bird, bounce off him and you will make it. Easy stuff. 6-2 features this cool section where you're supposed to use Super Baby Mario to run over the spikes. However, as you can see, there's a lot of coins in the way. So we are actually gonna skip the superstar with the help of these rats. Eat one of them and go back to the start point. Then, aim a really precise egg shot so you clear the top left corner of the square where the star is trapped. Spit the rat in that corner and jump off it. That way, you'll gain enough height to be able to flutter onto this wall. From here, you can flutter to the next wall, and so on. You keep fluttering, maybe these enemies can help you along the way, until you reach the end goal without ever touching the superstar. 
the spinning locks in 6-3 can make us go really really high if we jump on them when they are moving, something that, as you can see, can help us to go over some coins in different parts of the level. 6-4 doesn't have any tricky coins to avoid, so we'll throw Tap Tap into the lava and move on to 6-5. Here we find yet another problem. Those coins above the lava are a nightmare. I tried everything, going under them, breaking the ice on top with an egg and going over them, even bringing a shy guy and trying to land on him, but nothing worked. This is another time where we have to collect at least one coin to proceed. But the problems don't end there, because at the beginning of the second auto scroller, we're supposed to collect all these coins. Fortunately, we have a way to skip most of them. If instead of running, we duck and let the screen push us, we're gonna still collect those four coins, but at least we can avoid the rest of them. The end of the level is just really really hard platforming. We wanna eat one bird, because we'll use him for later, and then jump off the last one. After that, we need to flutter over these coins, dodging all those falling chomp rocks. This seems really hard, and it is, but you only have to memorize when and how to jump and you'll be fine. Finally, we wanna bounce off the bird we had eaten and flutter 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 along with the outer scroller until the end. Phew, <sighs> that was intense. We deserve an easy coinless level and 6-6 six six is one of them. Just remember to let those tap taps fall to their doom at the end of the level and we can continue. Only two levels to go! And 2 is also the number of unavoidable coins we have to collect in 6-7, because of this ring of coins. You must touch one to enter the ring and stand on this egg block, and then another one to get out of the ring and onto this yellow platform. Immediately after that you may think that this jump that you have to do is really difficult, but my dear friend, you have seen nothing yet. Then there's this jump, and this jump, where you have to keep fluttering waiting for that platform to come, but the worst section by far is this, where not only you have to somehow dodge all those coins, but there's also a giant chomp right behind you ready to bite your ass. Your first instinct may be to run away from him as fast as you can, but you actually wanna play slow, because the slower you go, the slower he goes too, and so you have more time to think. Phew, glad that part is done. As you'll see, the rest of the level is much easier. Here, you wanna actually do a blind jump to the right to skip a platform with some coins in it. This looks a bit scary, but don't worry, because if you keep fluttering, you'll eventually reach this area. Near the end of the level, we find another ring of coins, but this time we can get past it without collecting a single one. The only thing that you don't wanna do is jump on the yellow platforms, because the momentum they carry will force you to collect a coin. Instead, to reach that platform above, we will make a perfect flutter, just as we did back in 2-4. And so we finally made it to Bowser's castle, which is no ordinary castle, because it has four doors, each one with its own unique section, from which you have to choose only one. With so many options, surely we won't have any problems at all, right? Well, we can't use door 1, because once we arrive to this part with the switch, the bridge is completely filled by coins, and we can't continue. Maybe if we try door 2? Nope, there's also coins blocking the path here. It must be door 3, I mean, how improbable would it be that every door... Oh! Okay. If you are wondering, yes, these coins are indeed unavoidable. You cannot jump between them, even with a pixel-perfect position. Door 4 it is, then, I suppose. I hope there won't be many coins in this section... Well, f Ironically, door 4, which is the one with the most coins, is the only one that we can do coinless. The only thing that we have to do is jump on those gusties at the right time and with a little bit of luck, we'll get past that wiggly wall of coins. We get to Baby Bowser, defeat him, then defeat Big Baby Bowser, being careful that there are no big eggs on screen, and that's it! We've made it and saved Princess Peach. I mean, Luigi, I guess. 
So at this point, we obviously know that Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island cannot be beaten without touching any coin, but now we also know what is the minimum number of coins required. Let's do a quick recap. Of the 48 levels that there are in the game, only 11 include unavoidable coins. We have to collect one coin in levels 1-4, 2-4, 2-7, 2-8 and 3-3. We must touch two coins in level 6-7. Both 1-8 and 4-1 feature three unavoidable coins each. We must collect five coins in level 6-5, seven coins in level 3-4 and, as you all know, 41 coins in that horrible 5-3. Altogether, this gives us a grand total of 66 coins. I know it is a pretty high number, but Yoshi's Island is such a hard game, as you could tell nearly every level required some kind of skip, that I feel really proud. Besides, I had a lot of fun doing this challenge, and I hope you did also by watching this video. Take care and see you another time.